Good evening. I am Joseph Pereira, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It is 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 20th, 2024. We are meeting at one government center in the first floor hearing room, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, Subsection F. Here, I hereby disclose that all persons in attendance at, at this meeting is that this meeting is being I've only read this 22 times it's been recorded with both video and audio devices by Fall River Government Television Mr. Craig Salvador uh, recording both video and audio version if anyone desires to make an audio video or combination recording thereof please notify me now and I shall make a public announcement of your intention there's seeing none uh, our recording secretary this evening is Nina Kruger, sitting to my immediate right. Present this evening are permanent members uh, John Frank, who is our vice chairman, James Calkins, our clerk, uh, Ricky Sahadi, and myself. Um, also with us this evening is Dan Aguiar, our director of engineering and planning. Nina, have all petitions to be considered been properly, properly advertised and all interested parties noticed in accordance with the rules and regulations of the ZBA and Mass General Law 40A as amended? Yes. I hereby declare the June 20th, 2024 regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall come before it. I remind all persons presenting before the board, including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support or anyone opposed to the, the petition, that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chair. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I hereby advise all petitioners and all interested persons that this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. The board's authority exists pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the ordinances of the City of Fall River. Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use which is the subject of the petition before the zoning board this evening. The clerks in the building, planning, engineering, and licensing departments are competent in the dispatch of their duties as clerks. They are, however, not lawyers and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate and I urge all petitioners to seek competent legal counsel before filing your petition and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a city ordinance 2015-11 section 10-1 requiring site plan review. A copy of the ordinance is available at the city clerk's office or from the planning department. <clears throat> I remind everyone that the building inspector is the zoning enforcement authority and you are here this evening because the building inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the City of Fall River's zoning ordinances. The City Charter Section 9-18 mandates that all multi-member boards develop and adopt rules or policies for public comment. We have adopted such a policy which ensures <coughs> provides for citizens' input on zoning board specific matters at the end of the evening. Anyone wishing to make comment this evening may sign up to do so. I declare that an official copy of the Fall River Zoning Ordinance is available at the City Clerk's Office. One cannot rely on the online zoning ordinance. I will announce that we are a four-member board tonight. What does that mean? It means that one of our regular members uh, is not here and that one of our alternate members is not here. By having only four members present, it would require a 100% four-member vote for anything to pass um, to be approved. So one no vote shuts anything down. Uh, Nina has reached out to all of the petitioners tonight 
and all but one has sent in, dropped off a letter or an email uh, requesting to be continued um, until the next meeting. Uh, we do have to vote on those. I don't really feel like reading 19 letters, but... Could we do it collectively? We could. Yeah, just, just we, enumerate yeah, them, I, item, Mr. whatever. Mr. Chairman, I move that those, uh, those petitions that are submitted for continuances be granted without, uh, with no further fee. And, and specifically that's... Until the July... July... July 18th. July 18th meeting. And that is um, zero item, one. Yep. HQV Homes LLC at 150 Purchase Street uh, under new business item number one BMF 4 LLC for 26 Brow Street item number two BMF 4 LLC 105 Park Street um, item number three Jason Cody 195 is it oh Pittman Street I'm sorry um, item number four, uh, Christopher Mongian, 301 America Street. Item number five, uh, I Five Diamonds LLC, 518 Jefferson Street. So all of those items will not be heard tonight. If you are here to speak on behalf of or in opposition to any of those hearings, they will be heard on July 18th. Same bat time, same bat, uh, same, same, same bat. Time? Yes. Yes. Uh, the 18th? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Right. We'll get another Which ones were you here for? Yeah, the five diamonds. Five diamonds? Okay. Yes, so new additional notifications will not go out. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, July 18th. Very good. Thank you for coming out. Which ones, so which ones are you we guys have, here for? We have a motion on those that items. Do we good. have a second? Second. A motion and a second, then on the motion. John Frank? Yes. Jim Calkins? Yes. Ricky Sahadi? Yes. And Chairman Pereira? Yes. We have then one item to be heard this evening, item number six, 101 Broadway, LLC. The property address is 101 Broadway. Map I-03, lot 39. The applicant seeks a variance to change the use of the property from an automotive sales facility to a retail storage landscaping yard. The property is located in the WTOD waterfront and transit oriented uh, uh, development zoning district. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, my name is Jeff Tolman from Northeast Engineers and Consultants. I'm here tonight with uh, Brennan DeMello um, of DeMello and Sons Incorporated. Um, he is the petitioner for this particular application. Uh, the location of this project is 101 Broadway, which is map I-03, lot 0039. It's located on the west side of Broadway, opposite um, the bottom of Columbia Street. The property is located in the waterfront and transit-oriented development uh, district, the WTOD. Um, that district does extend basically um, the entire, in this particular area, on the west side of, of Broadway. On the east side of Broadway is the local business uh, district, zoning district. Uh, most of the properties in this area are either used commercially or residentially. Um, this particular property was used in the past um, and it has not been operational for some time, I want to say, but it has been within the past two years as a automotive uh, car dealership. What the petitioner is looking to do is to change that use from automotive dealership to a landscape yard. Um, the building department and the zoning enforcement officer has made a determination that this uh, particular use is not allowed in the WTOD, uh, thus the reason for filing the variance uh, to t change that use. So quite simply, what we're looking to do is to um, basically maintain as much of the, the property as you see it now, um, use the existing office trailers that are located on the property uh, in a similar fashion as to what they were being used uh, before. Uh, we are proposing to add some uh, landscape bays for material storage. Uh, we have seven of them along the uh, northwest property uh, boundary and an additional four along the, uh, the south property boundary. Uh, we would be putting in some striping uh, to identify parking areas on the property. There would be three customer spots right in front of the offices. 
uh, with additional six parking spots reserved for employees, uh, which would be on the, the southwest corner of the property. Um, the property's unique um, in shape, um, thus the, uh, the hardship that we're dealing with here and also the location that we're dealing with. Um, being at a somewhat busy area, busy intersection, um, in a unique configuration, and being surrounded by uh, commercial properties and residential properties, and, and really being cut off from uh, the waterfront by the New York Central Line LLC uh, property that extends um, along the uh, northern property boundary of this site. There is no uh, direct pedestrian access uh, from this property to the waterfront area. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have on this particular petition. Well, I mean, it is a use variance, and thank you very much. The hardship is the property. The hardship is the surroundings. I'm not, I'm not feeling that as, as a hardship or a use variance. It is, again, it's a commercially used property now, or at least it has been in the past, and we're just simply looking to, uh, to change that use uh, to something that, again, is not allowed in the WTOD, but in my particular opinion, um, it is something that would be less intrusive um, and less detrimental to the surrounding area that, that's you know, what's, what's currently being used for now. Can we get a little more in depth on what yeah. a landscaping retail storage yard is? What you're gonna have there? What you're gonna? Okay, so I'm gonna sell like mulch, um, like materials that you would use for mulch, like for, for landscape mulch, um, gravel, sand, stones. Something, something. So, so you won't be running a landscaping it, business. There's not gonna be a landscaping contractor station there. No. Trucks and lawnmowers no. and repairs no, and equipment. Like and no, it so not be a retail. No fertilizer, outdoor noxious smell stuff. Um, if there was any fertilizer, it would be packaged stuff, but. Okay. Not like. So it's not a landscape business. We're not going to see any Camello landscaping trailers leaving every morning full no, of like anything. You might see a truck because we will be. We will You'll deliver. be doing deliveries. Correct. How many trucks are you going to have on site? Probably just one. Just one. Right. Has the building and I, only because I don't want you to have a problem once you get to the building department. Has the building department made any determination with regards to needing to provide handicap accessibility to the office spaces? Not that I'm aware of, no. All right, so that, just, just so that you know, when, once you get there, one, he may determine that trailers aren't considered primary structures, and he may have an issue with right. that, but I can't speak for him. And then two, he may require that you provide handicap accessibility to the office spaces. So the handicap person comes, they need somewhere to park, a designated handicapped spot. And then two, they need to be able to access the office just like someone who's not handicapped so that they can go in and pay their bill, speak to whoever, so the transaction's not done no in the parking lot. So we don't make that determination, he does. So just understand that that may be an issue. Um, what What's your anticipated hours of operation and days of the week? Uh, most likely seven to five. Seven to five. Seven days a week or? Um, no, probably not Sunday. If anything, we'll a lot of people want to buy mulch on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It'll just be half day. <laughs> right? Just be half day <laughs> um, yeah. But even your deliveries won't be at the yard and leaving the yard before 7 a.m.? No. Okay. Are these open bays or covered? Open. Concrete block, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? I mean, those are my logistical questions. You know, I don't disagree with your, with your zoning determination or, or mindsets with, with regards to hardship, but that's for you guys to decide. It is in an extremely flexible waterfront and transit oriented development district that allows for a lot of things mm -hmm. to take place. Right. Anybody here wish to speak in favor of the petition? Anyone here wish to speak in opposition? Well, I mean, the district itself, A is huge.
And you dealt with, it was Glenn that made the determination? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know how the automotive sales got there? Was it through variants? Or was it before it became waterfront transit oriented? There was no variants. The there was nothing, no variances. Uh, maybe it was allowed, whatever the underlying yeah, district was. Because I know, I mean, it's been a car lot for a while, right? Right. It has been two or three. And it has an operator yeah. for a while. Yeah. Was it ever anything else other than a car lot? Not that I that can you recall. remember? I have yeah. the property card. Mm -hmm. Is there a retaining wall or anything in the back of the property? It just says commercial. Yeah, look, I mean, it looks oh, like some the, structure uh, there. The, it, 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 up against the tracks? Yeah, the, the, there's a fence. I don't believe there's a retaining wall. It's it's okay. kind of heavily vegetated back there. Um, it just looks like some structure. On, on, on. No, it's just that there's all asphalt that goes back to the to the fence, and then it's all overgrown coming in from the, the railway, so it's tough to see. But I don't believe there is. I don't believe there's that significant a grade change in this particular area. Is there... The, so the southerly curb cut that accesses the area behind the bins labeled as existing asphalt, mm -hmm. is that utilized by this building or the building to the south? It's utilized by both. Is there an easement there? Or I don't... Isn't that drive through is that, that is, where you get through the drive through that is, that is their driveway to get in. I would imagine there is an easement in place. I don't, I don't know that to be 100% true. Um, but that is their access to get into the commercial building on the side. And it yeah. loops all the way around that building right. to the other. I was, I was um, just thinking of it would, it would be great to create green space <laughs> if we could, but no, I do know that now it's being used by that property. Because yeah, it didn't serve any purpose to you. Correct. It's like a bollard and chain type fence that runs along the yeah. edge of that asphalt area. But the, that property, the property line does. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, yes. And again, just to be clear, the only commercial act, commercial activity would be purchase and sale. Is that correct? Nothing else. No, no contracts. No anything like that. No trucks coming in and out. Just purchase and sales. People walking in, buying the mulch and walking out. Is that correct? Correct. The only, I mean, the only thing would be getting the mulch there. Right. That was one truck. Right. Cool. Well, there would be a there would be a vehicle that would but deliver. I mean, you would own one truck. That he, he, that he sends mulch out. Out, right. Larger right. trucks would come right. in and, and yeah. deposit yeah. materials. No, Deliver I mean, it there. For the business itself. For the mm -hmm. business itself, it would be one yeah. truck. I mean, as long as it that worked out to be one truck, and then it might be two or one point later down. But no, that's not my plan. And you just have, what, a small bobcat to load the truck? Correct. I'm assuming that you, you'll sell to landscapers. Correct. No, yep. Correct. Okay. So they, they'd be rolling their trucks in to load up? Correct. Okay. Trying to understand what it's, it, it's an odd spot. It is an it, it's an odd business for an odd spot. That doesn't mean it's the wrong one. All right. So we've got to use variance. I don't see a hardship, but that's one guy. What are our wishes? I just I have issue with if there's going to be uh, uh, landscaping business pretty much running through there. You're going to have cars and trucks and trailers coming in and out of there constantly. That's a tough intersection. Yep. Uh, I just don't think it's a good fit for that spot. And uh, with that, I'm going to make a motion to deny. Motion to deny. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Then on the motion, John Frank? Yes. Jim Calkins? Yes. Ricky Sahadi? No. And Chairman Pereira? Yes. I'm sorry. It's just the wrong spot. Thank wrong you. district. Thank you. All right. Yeah, she, she came in, she came in after. Oh, I'm sorry. Which which case did you? 
Did no, you? they were here for 101 Broadway. But you the, were. The, but this uh, lady came in with the glasses after you made your announcement. Oh, you, um, about Marriage did that Table. Table. Yeah. So it, what happened is there were only four active members here tonight. Okay. So any every decision requires all four members to vote. So we offer the petitioners, we just had you know, two people out. So we offer the petitioners the uh, opportunity to um, table until the next meeting in, uh, in July. So on July 18th, that matter will be heard. Okay. And it will not be re-notified, so you won't get a new notice. Okay. You'll get right. a summary of decisions, though, from this meeting. So Same that will too. say when it's going <coughs> to be. Okay. 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 Cool. Thank you. All right. Let's open our discussion about review procedures, et cetera, to tighten things up a little bit. Um, so, Dan, you mentioned that you, you've made one change thus far. The yeah, department well, has made one change. At the change. last meeting, I told you that I was going to come up with some ideas. I yep. didn't. And when I realized we weren't going to have a quorum or to vote, because I wanted all the members to come up, by all means, we can start the discussion so that we can include those things on there. So, today, because we did have so many um, items to be tabled. Um, and when we start to lose control over dates and times to act, and we want to make sure that we are covered with regards to constructive approvals of things and make sure that we're allotted the time to make decisions that we need to. So I thought it would be good to make a form standard that every petitioner requesting the matter to be tabled, whether in a scenario like this, Mm -hmm. where it's only four members or if it's just a normal hearing where they presented and they've decided to can we table it so we can work on it just a standard form that they waive their rights and I think you can see them on the iPad mm -hmm. um, they acknowledge that they're requesting the matter to be tabled either to the next meeting or a date okay. certain that we can fill in and they're also acknowledging that they're waiving their the rights requiring us to meet and provide a decision within a certain amount of time in, according to Massachusetts general law. Mm -hmm. So it just gives us protection because theoretically in a matter like this, if we now, if we didn't have a quorum, never mind. I mean, if we have four members, then we can force people to go. But if we don't have a quorum at all and we can't open the meeting next yeah. month, we, we could end up possibly being in a scenario where these things get automatically approved. Right. Um, so it's we just want to make sure that, that we're too. given those extensions of timelines i was always glad not to have to provide them to you when i was on that side but i think in 28 years we only had one project that that was uh, approved that way and actually i think it was i think a lady of health credit union maybe it, it was something odd. Really? yeah it was the weirdest thing uh, but it was like that it was a table a table at the applicant's request mm -hmm. and then at the meeting that it was table to there was no quorum so and I believe off the top of my head, it's 90 days that you have to issue the, the decision. But 90 or 100? I'm not sure. It's Again, I haven't had to deal with it in a while. So, nope. in any event, we're, we're covered if, as long as we get them to file those forms. Okay. So that's one thing. But but there are a number of ways, different things that we can tighten up on, how we intake plans, the deadline requirements. Uh, we've talked about that potentially requiring submissions to be delivered by noon. That would give staff the remainder of the day to review them, make sure they're complete before we have them stamped in. We often get 10 petitions in the last hour where we're not afforded time to review things. So we really can't say, well, we're not going to stamp you in. So we end so up accepting petitions. petitions and submissions that are inadequate. Um, and then chase people. And then chase people. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think people would be thankful and be responsive to the chase but they are not, and we often end up not getting the information at all or at the 11th hour. So that brings us to the second issue. When yep. there is additional information that's required or requested, there should be a, a timeline of when that information is submitted. I think a week is, okay. is sufficient. I think a week so is we generous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, those, that's, are, those are the three items that, that we can start with. Well, I mean, uh, and. Nina and I had a had a side conversation, which I'll I'll bring up, um, and it was just my recommend. One of my recommendations is actually to take 
uh, or, or require an appointment to drop off so that we have better control over it. Um, I like the idea of making the cutoff not the end of the day, but noontime, yep. for example, of the, the, the last day. Let me ask you this, Nina. What percentage of applicants are waiting till the last day, till the deadline day? I would say um, about 85%. Yeah. Okay. And what, so what happens is it's often, so one attorney who does much of the work, he's waiting and relying upon getting the plan Understood. from the engineer. Yep. And then there's cross competing. The engineer's trying to get his plans done first because he's also coming in late with them. Um, so we run into that issue a lot. But it is about 80, 85%. They're going to have to shift the schedules. Yeah. All right. Listen, I, I've and been that's on why the other side of the table and you've been on the other side of the table. Yeah. All right. There, this will not be the first municipality in the Commonwealth that requires an appointment to drop off your plans. Yeah. This will not be the first uh, municipality that makes it something other than the last minute of the business day that is the due yep. date. So, and all those things being true, um, you know. And your, your deadline day, it, it falls on, it, it should fall in the middle of the week, right? It, 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 it well, technically, we always have it on the 14th. 14th so that it's consistent. That's always been the case. So that way there's, it doesn't roll. Every month deadline is the 14th. Unless it's a week. Some months, on some months that buys us a little yeah. bit extra time. Right. Sometimes it get, provides less time. So the 14th falls on a Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Carries to the following month, next business day. Mm -hmm. Same thing on a Monday holiday. It's on the Tuesday. Um, so when, when we're See, I, I'd rather have a adequate time between submission and the time that's got the uh, uh, stamp than an appointment because everybody's going to wait and want that last appointment and it's going well, that's to be it. taken. So I, I, was so gonna, I was going to talk about the appointments, but yeah. so if you remember, there used to be a late deadline mm -hmm. also for ZBA, mm -hmm. which we did away with, which was the a following week. Yeah. Okay. So we really have a week to get these things right. And mm -hmm. that's why we've been generally okay with accepting things that are missing, but that's what people are responsive and get us the, the needed right. information within that next week because that's when legal ads need to go out. And so we often find that we are correcting, and this is to serve the applicant. If we, if we advertise things the way that they're initially presented, either through application yep. or through building permit denial, mm -hmm. these applicants would have a problem yeah. because they would be requesting relief either that they didn't need or not all the relief that they need. So we, we try to work to alert them to the fact of, okay, you may have missed this or, um, but so, so maybe we do too much, but I also don't wanna waste your time if they're sitting there asking for A, B, and C, and then I have to be the bearer of bad news and say, well, you didn't ask for D, E, and F. Yeah. So we can give you what you asked for, but you'll have to come back and ask for the other three. Because once it's advertised, we cannot that, grant any add. additional relief. Um. So, is there a way to remove something from the agenda if it hasn't been, if your uh, requirements have not been met by X date? Or, or well, yeah. So we we don't have to. We're not bound to place it on an agenda until it's been deemed complete and stamped in by the clerk. That's why we're trying to create that time in between. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's a half a day, or maybe we make it two days, or maybe we don't stamp anything in until the following week. So that, but if, if there aren't true and fast hard deadlines in a short period of time, Correct. they're all gonna get yeah. abused and it's all gonna be at the end of the day. Right. So I can't tell, we, we can't block out, again, the four o'clock meeting before the last deadline for a certain attorney or a certain engineer. It's just not the way that, that things get done. Um, I think the other thing that was brought into shop focus at the last meeting yeah. is that what we're trying to avoid is that uh, somebody comes in with this request and then we have to be more to it. You know, they're pushing on the agenda. Um, 
So what you're saying is that this would alleviate the, that problem. It would be hard and fast. This is what they're asking for. And if they need anything else, well, that's another need. Exactly. That's the way it should be. And, and, and again, it's the 11th hour. There is no way that an application should come in that the description of the requested relief on the application is any different than what the building permit with the building, the building denial says. Yeah. Okay, so I know an engineer that used to do this, and he would send the denial paperwork filled out, narrative form, to the building department. Mm -hmm. Cut and paste that same narrative and put it on the application to make sure everything matched. But if you don't take that effort and you leave it up to the building department to create the narrative, that's fine. But then you're stuck with what that narrative says. Right. And that needs to be on your application. And we often have applicants change what they wrote yeah. or ask the building department change what they wrote so that they all match, so that you have one concise set of relief that you need to act on. Um, so we need some time to allow that to happen before, before the clerk stamps them in. And we will we'll make it known, deadline day is here. Mm -hmm. And we'll put it on the form. This does not mean that you know, the delivery of or submission of your package does not deem that you're placed on the next agenda, whatever. It's right. once it's deemed complete and stamped yeah. by the clerk, which is the way many other municipalities deal with it. That's correct. If you go to New Bedford, it takes sometimes three months to get placed on a zoning board of appeals wow. agenda because you submit it all, they review it. They prepare a report. They include that with the, and then they make sure that your application coming in checks every box that they told you you needed to. Mm -hmm. So, do I think that's a little bit overkill? <coughs> a little bit. I think it's overkill. Worcester does something similar. Yeah. But it, it, it is the way it should be. <laughs> it's the way it should be, and, and it eliminates the, the debacle of, well, what are we talking about here? You know, and, and that seems to be coming more of the norm, and it should be. Yeah. Um, at 12 o'clock, I'm just spinning back to the 12 o'clock deadline thing. Is that realistic for your office? I mean, when you have lunches and people coming in and out, or you have coverage to be able to have somebody there at 12 o'clock every day on that day, or you just make it available? Well, the coverage is what we do now for right four. Now. Yeah. You know, so I'm trying to eliminate that now. Uh, I, I really think that your extension time should be from the time that the deadline for submission and the time that you date stamp that I think you should put another day in there. Okay. Uh, so that you've got, oh. And I also would question, you, you know, I, I, I see that a lot of these are coming in that they're expecting you because of your expertise. Right. You're doing half of their work yes. for them. And I don't think that that, I mean, you've got to define what role you, and, the, and the yeah. department should nope. take. And right? that's the part of the problem, right. And, and they rely, they lean on the department, which they shouldn't be. They take advantage of it. They do. <laughs> and then, well, and I don't mind, take advantage of it two weeks before your deadline. Yeah. So have a meeting, come discuss your project, which many people do. Let's go over what we think so we can put together a sound package. But once you submit it, that's it. You're submitting it and, and be done. So we'll, let, let us check on the times and the dates. Maybe we have a, a submission deadline, it can still be the 14th, but we don't stamp them in. So the following business day yeah. at five o'clock or four o'clock, so that gives us a full day to review them. And as long as on the application, people understand, and we'll put an acknowledgement. We can put a cover on the whole thing. Sure. You're acknowledging, you're signing this that when you submit this, you understand that this is not deemed complete until it's reviewed. You will be notified within 24 hours. If well, yeah, it something will only to that be effect. placed on the agenda upon, right. uh, upon, upon approval. Determination that you've got the a complete application. Yeah. being complete right. and, and stamped. Something like that. Okay. Again, we're not going to vote on anything tonight, no. but I can come up with a No, but yeah, can we a have a yes. six bullet points of yep. what you're looking Some for things. exactly for the next, uh, the next meeting so we could have your proposed forms, how yep. you want to do it, so we can get this done. So we, don't, we, we, we yep. want to drag this off for four months. For your sake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for everyone's sake. You know, we want to make sure that this yeah, should have happened. And in the meantime, time think of anything else procedurally that we should, that we could include so that we can get as much done in this as possible. 
if there's anything, any pet peeves or things that the way that you see. We'll give them a like. discounted fee if they they bring it in early. How's that? Uh, no, I'm being sarcastic. No, no, we're going to go the other way. There's no discounted fee. There's increased fees for the opposite direction. <laughs> but later in the day, you come. Which is the, which? That used to be the case, right? There was an increase. Yeah. There was a late filing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then everybody started just doing the late filing. Yeah, they didn't. The money was. <laughs> so yeah, it was only like I think a hundred dollars more. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Nina, any? We talk about this a lot. So yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure. I'm just wondering. I know you get the brunt of a She's lot the of dealing with most of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is that, like, I have I have a checklist, and I, I look through them pretty thoroughly. Yeah. Um, and then I notice a lot of times I'm giving them revisions the day of. Like, I'm telling them, okay, well, this needs to be fixed, this needs to be fixed, this needs to be fixed. Get Simple a service things. plan. Simple yeah, it, it's all things that happen every single month. Oh, you don't have a registry of deeds mm -hmm. reference on here. Oh, um, the applicant's name isn't on here. Oh, the your butters don't have um, the they don't have the area. Or they don't yeah. have the land uses. Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing every single month. I do turn away a good yeah there two are, or three yeah. Believe it or not, there are a lot that get turned away. Oh, I'm sure. Mostly from people who haven't done work in the yeah. area, but it's pretty clear on our guidelines yeah. what needs to be on the plan. If you can read a, a recipe and make brownies, you should be able to prepare a plan. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's a matter of coming up with a fair, a fair timeline, which is fair to the office, mm -hmm. uh, the intake individual, the review individual, and, and still fair to the petitioner. Yeah. And if they can't get something here a week before the hearing, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess you No don't matter what deadline we give them, yeah. they're going to. So, so if it's 12 o'clock on the 14th, they're going to be here at 11 o'clock on the yeah. 14th. Mm -hmm. But let us get a better understanding of what is, what is the submission date, <clears throat> when do we need to have them stamped in by. Mm -hmm. Because maybe we've been artificially forcing ourselves to stamp them in at the end of the business day on the 14th. Because no, it's really that's, just that's it's, it's our arbitrary date. submission date. Yeah, that's that's the submission date. That's yeah. not the acceptance date. Exactly. So, let us work on that and uh, cool. and how we deal with that. Okay. okay. Citizens' good. input. Nope. Approval of minutes from May sixteenth. Move away. We're on. Um, we're we yeah. have to ask. It's on. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Wait, no, no, no. we gotta make so motion moved. to table. <laughs> hmm? To table the minutes. Uh, motion to table the minutes. <laughs> Four hour meeting. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Yes, so moved. Okay. And, and Jim now. just seconded it. Back. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the motion to table the reading of the minutes. Yes. 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 You guys can still make kite night. Move the adjourn the city pier. Motion to adjourn. Yes, so moved. Second. <laughs> on the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you.